Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out one of the easiest to use 3D game engines out there, Copper Cube. And the reason why we're looking at this is twofold. First off, Copper Cube 6.6 .6 was just released. Also over the weekend, Game Guru, Game Guru Max, uh, was available on Humble Bundle. I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. So those are probably two of the easiest to use 3D game engines out there. What you see in front of you, this one here is Copper Cube. Now 6.6, .6, one of the big new things about this release is that they added Dark Mode. Now I know to many of you people, Dark Mode is kind of a necessity. Necessity. And to be honest, if you go back to the way it used to be, uh, yeah, I get it. So first off, warning for your eyes. This is the old uh, UI. So I can see definitely how people do appreciate dark mode. And that is one of those things 6.6 .6 added. Now, this is a Windows-only game engine now. As of uh, 6.4, they no longer support the Mac OS. Uh, the old downloads are still available, although those will run under Wine if you are interested. So here you can see uh, they have their default cube of levels. There's a couple of imperfections still in the dark mode. For example, uh, the background on scroll bars is still white, and the background on some boxes is still white. He is working on on those improvements. But let's check out what Copper Cube is capable of. Now, this is never going to be uh, a, a mind blower graphically. Like, it's not the prettiest engine you will find out there, but what it is, is very easy and reasonably full functioning. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and show you a uh, first person shooter example. So you're gonna see very, uh, 2010-ish graphics here. We got this guy walking around in a room. Very simple environment here. It is an internal room. Now the cool thing here is if you want to go ahead and create environments like this, it's really simple. Like, and I'm talking really simple because you can do grid-based rooms using the room builder as an example. And basically you just start drawing out the room you wish. So if you want to add some uh, flooring to it, you just basically with floor brush, draw it out here, pick the type of ceiling that you want to have, if any at all, pick the ceiling texture, and then you're picking basically so the walls, let me just wrap in wall type number one, and then I go to wall type number two. So you can see creating these kind of rooms is super simple. By the way, defining the wall types is just a matter of picking the texture. So if you want to create these internal environments, you're not going to create the best looking results, but you're going to do it darned quick. Now at the same time here, you can see again, room-based environment. One thing I really dislike, and this is kind of a, I don't know, uh, the world has changed here. It does not have WASD camera navigation. So you use right mouse button is a zoom in and out. Middle mouse button is a pan and then orbit. It's very, I'm so used to WASD controls for navigating the scene. I really wish that that would change. But the environment here, very simple to work with. So let's say we want to go ahead and add a behavior to this guy. So he's already got one. You see he's walking and following a path in the world as the path is defined. Very, very simple. We can also instantiate things, no problem. So I could just basically double click, drop something in the world. So now we have this prefab available here. It could have been a model, could have been whatever. Now let's add a behavior to it. So this guy's gonna follow this path. I'm gonna show you how we can follow that path as well. So with our fire selected over here, uh, we can go down here to behaviors and we'll click the little plus icon and you can extend, you can add the behaviors right here. So behaviors triggered by events. Uh, game behavior, so we can have it basically every frame, we can do it every X something, when something runs into it, when you press a key or whatever here, and we'll just do this one, follow a path. And then we'll go ahead and say path to follow, and we will follow that path right there. And then you see our fire is just rip roaring around the environment. We could also do the same thing. Uh, let's grab our soldier over here. So you can see he's got a couple of behaviors already defined and the properties can be set down here. So this is a very simple behavior. It's a game actor. So if you want to add an actor into the world, you can boom, just add a game actor behavior in and then configure things about it. Uh, is it a flyer and so on? And just let the game take care of it for you. So instantiating and creating NPCs, very simple in that regard. So let's go ahead here and we're going to go ahead and add a every uh, tick behavior. So a behavior triggers by event and then we'll do this every few seconds. So by every few seconds, I actually mean every half a second. So we'll do 500 milliseconds action. So come down here, pick the action for it. And then we can go here plus pick an action. And here are some of the various different actions you can do. Move things around, change the texture, set the animation, play a sound, scenes, and so on. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll scale this guy up. So every, every half a second, we're going to scale this guy up by 0 0.1, sorry, 1.1, 1.1, .1, .1, and 1.1. Now what I want to do is make sure that this is by a vector as opposed to absolute, or it's just going to do it once, and then go ahead. So this guy's going to to kind of scroll up as time goes on. He's going to scroll very fast, by the way. Uh, and then in order to actually preview the game, come over here, go uh, Tools, and we do Test as a Windows Application. Let's go ahead and run that. By the way, you saw you can also do, so let's go see how this guy is growing. So our fire is ripping around the world, and every half a second, he is getting a little bit bigger, or 
Is he getting smaller? I think I might have screwed something up because he's actually getting he's getting smaller every tick. Uh, but you get an idea of exactly how the logic and programming works. Again, all of the platforms available to, to target are here, so you can still build for macOS. By the way, you just the editor stopped as a 3.4. I also have Android support over here, WebGL and Windows application. Another thing you probably want to be aware of is the stuff you can import. So you can import static 3D meshes. Uh, in a variety of formats, including like LightWave going back in time there, or OBJ format and Collada, etc. And you can bring in animated files in the form of a couple different things, specifically FBX. So you can bring in an FBX file, but you can also bring in a DirectX file, Blitz 3D Milk Shape, uh, but FBX is probably the one that most of you are going to use. Um, yeah, so that is kind of the idea behind. Let's zoom out of this room that was built here. We'll show you a couple of the other features we've got going on. Uh, building terrain is super simple. Basically, just create it, set the size of it. Do you want trees on it and grass on it? If yes, then just leave it as default. And that's the involvement in creating terrain. Really, that was all you need to do to create terrain. And now if you want to go ahead and modify the terrain, uh, you have your terrain creation brushes over here. So we can smooth it out using this guy right here. Uh, you can raise it up using this guy right here. And uh, that might have been a little excessive, but uh, you get the idea. We also have a flatten tool, so I can, okay, 90 to flatten it from the top. I'm making some really ugly train here, but let's make a plateau on the top of this train. There you go. So train tools, very simple to work with. Same thing, you want to add water into your world. Boom, go ahead and create it, and then basically set how high up in the world it is. And boom, you've got water. So really simple to add all these things in. You're going to notice again, you do have a uh, prefabs, basically just double click. You want to add some more prefabs in, you can actually right click here. And there's a couple available for download on their website. Uh, same thing is true for behaviors. So down here, you'll notice in behavior, scripted behaviors, you can uh, download more. Another thing is you can easily write your own behavior. So if you want to move beyond what is provided out of the box, uh, if you have any JavaScript programming ability, you can easily extend it that way. And then we got a number of other tools here. Um, for example, we got nice tree builder, a variety of different uh, settings for that tree. Again, you're not getting uh, AAA quality looks here, but if you're uh, if you're looking to create your first 3D game at, at this point in time, very uh, solid, easy to use game engine. If, so I'm not going to go into too much more uh, detail on this one. You got 2D imp, uh, items here for if you want to create an overlay, display things, UI layers kind of stuff. That is available right there. There is full physics support. Um, there's light mapping in here, polygonal editing. So you can actually um, edit uh, shapes directly inside of the editor if you wish. Now there are some things, like I did say this was free, but not 100% fully free. Uh, so there are some features that are locked away. By the way, there's also um, plugins. You can create your own uh, using JavaScript if you so wish easily enough. Uh, but we've also got things like um, there's uh, video settings, like scene post effects. So I could come here, for example, I could go into uh, these post effects right here, these are only available in the more premium version. So if you want to have bloom, you want to have uh, vignetting, and so on. So you do have all of these special effects. Those are kind of one of the things that you're limited to the, the premium version there. Also, if you want the full source code, you're going to need to get the premium version as well. But as far as super easy to use game engines go, this one, Copper Cube, is one of the easiest out there. And if it isn't doing it for you, if you want better graphic quality but also staying easier... Do keep in mind, as I covered on the weekend, there is the game making collection going on right now. That includes Game Guru Max. Uh, it's probably buggier, uh, but definitely much, much uh, more up to date graphics engine and their higher graphic fidelity and another easy to use. So, in terms of easiest to use 3D game engines out there that aren't things like Core or Roblox type environments, uh, these two definitely come to mind for sure. Uh, so Copper Cube, uh, again, 6.6 .6 was just released. The biggest new thing in that particular release uh, was the addition of Dark Mode, which is still experimental and still has some issues in. Uh, you can customize the icons now, uh, updates to the underlying code generators, um, and then earlier release here had added high DPI support, uh, faster frame rates, larger script support, and so on. So definitely still getting improvements. I do wish that they would date stamp these releases so you actually knew when they occurred. Uh, but the new one, this one literally just occurred today. So uh, CopperCube 6.6, .6, the big new feature, of course, is that dark mode support, which I know for many of you is probably what you would consider a deal breaker. I mentioned earlier on, there are some premium things. So this is a free engine. You can create your game, you can sell it, you can send it royalty free, no revenue limits at all. Uh, uh, but if you want the professional version of it, which is 37 euro one-time purchase, 
Uh, 37 euro. I think that's about 37 USD at this point in time. Uh, professional edition with post-processing effects. So if you want the post-processing effects like Bloom and Vignette, etc. Uh, video playback. So if you need to play video inside of your game. Uh, a command line interface and customizing the, the startup logo. You're looking at 37 bucks there. But otherwise, full functionality in the free version. And if you're just starting out, you don't need any of these things. Um, so if you're just looking to learn game development, it's a pretty decent tool for it. Uh, and then Studio. This is if you're going to do some things a little bit more pro but the big thing here is um definitely going to be like the, the source code game client source code access and that there is 126 bucks or 126 euro uh, if you're interested by the way if you want to learn more about copper cube 6 good news i actually did a tutorial series walks you through the basics so getting started creating a train creating a camera uh programming your game uh collision is in physics support extending it uh, so basically you can create plugins easily using JavaScript, uh, creating your own rooms, and then importing your own assets. Pretty much everything you need to know to get up and going. I have that over on the Dev Game website. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Copper Cube 6. Uh, again, not it's not going to be, well, especially with all the post effects going, it's never going to be the prettiest engine ever. But when you're literally just learning game development or just playing around, it shouldn't matter. Uh, you get a decent amount of pre prefabs to start. You get decent file support to come in here. You get a very simple programming interface to work with. Um, again, this and GameGuru Max are two of the best introductory 3D level game engines out there, in my opinion. Uh, there are, of course, other options, but in terms of just raw, easy to use, uh, two of the, the better options, in my opinion. So let me know what you think, and if there's an easier game engine out there that you would recommend, uh, please do let me know, and I uh, will talk to you all later. Goodbye.